Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This video will demonstrate how to get started with the Stone HMI displays. As some of you might have guessed it, this is a promotional video, but if you are planning to buy one of these, you should watch it. We will see how to download the required software, how to connect the display to the computer, and how to load the application into the display. I will also try to give my honest opinion about this. So let's start with the inbox materials. Here we get a USB type A mail to mail connector. This will be used for downloading the code to the display. Next we have is a UART to RS-232 PCB, and this will be used for sending the UART commands to the display. It will also be used for supplying the power to the display. The display can support a wide range of voltages, but 9 volts is recommended. We also have two cables for connecting the PCB with our display. Finally we have the display. It's a 5.6 inches in size, and it looks very neat from the front. The back looks a bit more complicated to understand. It have the RJ45 port for the Ethernet, a USB Type A port for downloading the project and for communicating with USB devices. We have the pins for the speaker output. And if you notice on this side, there is a slot for the Wi-Fi too. There is a battery holder for the RTC. Basically it's a complete package, considering the hardware. Now for the connection, we will connect the cable to the PCB. As we will be using the DC adapter for powering up this display, make sure the connection is set towards the port, and not the USB. This USB can be used to send the UART commands to the display, but we won't be covering that part today, and therefore I am leaving the USB unconnected. Connect the cable to the display, and make sure that the switch is set towards the device mode. Once we connect the adapter, the display will power on, and this is how it looks. This is my old project running on it which I was testing before making this video. At the back of the display, a blue light will glow with full brightness. This here is the reset button. Let's connect the display to the computer. You see here it gets detected as a mass storage device. But if you connect for the first time, it will show the driver error in the device manager. So you need to download this CH340 drivers. I will leave the link in the description. Then click on the device which is showing error, click update driver, browse the computer for the driver. Now locate the folder you just extracted. Click next, and the driver will install. If the mass storage isn't detected, restart the computer. Also use the USB 2.0 port instead of USB 3.0. Here you can see the device, it's 145 megabytes. Alright let's download the softwares now.
search for stone HMI. Open the stoneitech.com. Here you can read about their products. The products are sorted based on application or size. We will go to the support, download. This is the manual for the stone designer. Let's see the GUI commands also. You can check the datasheet for your device also. Anyway, we want to download the software, so go to the software. Download the stone designer. You can find other software for some use, like the UART communication, or the font creator. After downloading the stone designer, install it, and open it. Here we have bunch of things that we can use during the designing. Let's create a new project. Give some name to this project. Choose the display size. And click create. I am going to add an image first. Resize it to fit the display. The image start at x0, y0, and the width will be 640, and the height will be 480. I already have images available for this size in the PNG format. We need to add those images in our project. Under the resource tab, click on image, and then click add button. Now add those images. We can add fonts, we can add video also. Although I don't see any point of adding video, as there is no option for the video element. Anyway we have the images in our project, so now we need to add them to the display. So click on the image element you just added. Here in the image section, you can select the image. Here we got ourselves a nice background image. This is the home page, and I want to add another image to another page. So we will create another window. And then perform the same steps to add another image here. Now we have two pages with two background images. So how do we go from one page to another during the runtime? We need to create some action, and for that we will add buttons to these pages. You can modify the button properties, like the button mode, the display text, the text size, the background color, etc. Now we will set some action for this button. This can be done using the function parameter. I am setting it to open a window. And in the target name, I am using window 1. Before uploading the code to the display, we will perform this check. There is an option here to debug the code. This runs the simulation of the display. When I click the next, the window has changed. The button is working alright, but we need to add one more button to this window, so that we can go back to the home page. We will perform exactly the same steps to add another button to the second window. And in the end, the target will be the home page. Let's debug it once.
All right everything is working pretty good. Now it's time to finally load this code to the display. Before that, save the project. Then click the compile button. It will compile the code, and open the project location. Come back to the assets folder. Copy the default folder into the device. You can overwrite everything. It takes a lot of time to copy. Now let's move to the display. The code has been downloaded to the display, so now we have to do is, press the reset button. And the new GUI will load. You can see this is working just as expected. Alright let's add one more window to this. Here I am putting the analog clock, and the digital clock. Let's also add the slider. We need to add a button to go to the third screen. The function will be, that it will open the third window. Let's save the project. Compile it, and save to the device. Reset the display, and the new code will be loaded. The clock is showing the wrong time because I did not plug in the battery yet. But the animation for the analog clock looks ok. The slider does not seem smooth at all. Maybe it's the cover over the display. Let me remove it. Still the slider is not sliding perfectly. You need to press really hard for the slider to work. Even while pressing the buttons, I need to press them hard as compared to other displays I have used so far. Anyway, let's see the manuals they provide for the reference. This is the Stone Designer Reference Guide. It have the description of all the elements, and their functions in the software. So you can refer this if you have hard time understanding the functions. This is the command set instructions for the UART. For example, if you want to send the command through the UART, it have to be in this format. They have provided the commands for every element, and it's nice. Basically you can change values, or read them via UART, using these commands. Actually last time when I saw this doc, it didn't look this great, but this seems readable. There are some tutorials, but they are provided for the older software, so you can't use them with the stone designer. I guess they will update this section soon. Here you can see the comparison between the previous displays and the newer ones. On papers these displays looks outstanding. But again, 
The software is still unpolished for the features. For example, here it have the support to play the video and audio files. But then how do you actually do it? There is no option in the designer to implement it. The same goes for the Ethernet connectivity. I mean they don't have any proper getting started guide, where it explains how to use the Ethernet, or Wi-Fi in our projects. Like I said, the display looks promising with great hardware, with great features, but the software and the documentation lacks the implementation of those features. Once they do some work in the software field, I think these will be the great displays. But you have better options available till then. That's all for today. Let me know what you guys think about these displays, as compared to the very famous ones from Nextian, or the ones provided by the ST on their development boards. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day ahead.